keeping poultry like chickens, ducks and quail, for example, is great fun. But sometimes we need to ensure that our animals, particularly poultry, aren't in places that they're not supposed to be, like our vegetable patch, or in harm's way, like attacks from hawks, dogs, cats, lizards in, in this case, and also rats and rodents, which quail are very susceptible to be attacked by. And there goes my dog. Luckily, my dog is chicken friendly. Right, so what can we do to ensure that we keep our birds safe from danger and out of the places we don't want them? Well, you can build a quail or chicken run like this one. In this video, I'm going to show you in 10 easy steps how you can build one of these things without being a builder or a carpenter. In fact, I'm neither of them, uh, far from it. But even I could build something like this. It just takes a bit of time, but it's not hard to do. Stay with me. I'm Mark Valencia, and welcome to Self-Sufficient Me. Let's get started. I've broken this down into 10 easy steps. Step number one is find a place where you want to place your run or establish the area for your chicken or quail run. It seems pretty simple, but if you get it wrong, well then you're going to go through all this effort, potentially two weekends of hammering and digging, only to put your pen in a place where you're going to have to break it down and move it or deal with the consequences. To make sure that it's on as high a ground as possible. Higher ground means that it's in an area of your property that's not going to get flooded, get swampy or boggy during the wet season. Okay, let's move on to step number two. Step number two is make a string line. Now, if you've never heard that phrase before, string line, it's what builders commonly use to square off the base of whatever they're building, be it a house, a driveway, a shed. It all starts from a square base and the best way to get it square is by using some pegs and some string. I'll show you some examples of that now in the video. Rightio, step three is post time. Locate where you want to place the posts. My quail's going nuts in the background here. That's because they love their pen so much. Where you put the posts, obviously you place a post in each corner. Depending on the size of your pen, that may be all you need. But for a pen like this, which is 7.2 meters long, I needed or wanted a couple of center posts to make sure that it's stable and it holds up my wiring and my roof well. So all in all, I've got nine posts in and they're easy to sight. All you need to do is, is work out from the start your spacing between your posts and if you've cut your roof runners to the same size, all you have to do is lay them on the ground. And I've got some video of that now. Step four is dig the holes for your posts. Whilst you're waiting for one post to dry, you can be digging the other one. With rapid set concrete for these posts, they can be stabilized within about 15 minutes. 
Let's move on to step five. Put on the top railings, which are these fellas here. Do that all around the sides of your uh, structure. Right, here's the frame for my quail pen. All the posts have been dug in and cemented in. On each corner post, I've put two bags of cement. On the middle posts, I've put only one bag of cement just to save costs and I don't think it's going to be an issue for a structure like this because it's still pretty sturdy. Uh, I have used two bags of cement for this middle post here <clears throat> because that's going to be my door frame. Okay that's step five let's move on to step six. Step six is placing the wire around the bottom of your run dug in. Rats in particular, or all types of rodents, are little buggers. They'll crawl and dig their way underneath your quail run or chicken run if it isn't properly dug in. I like to go down at least a foot and that seems to be suffice. And I've got some video and some shots of that to show you. Now we'll go on with step seven. Step seven is simply attaching the wire around the sides of your chicken or quail run. I've done this by using wire clips with my long nose pliers. You can get special crimping tools that clip these clips into position, uh, but I found that my pliers done a good enough job. I did use quite a few of them though, I think it was about 1500. So the wiring task is a hell of a job and it takes a lot of patience and time, but it's well worth it. Let's go on with step eight. Step eight is more wiring, unfortunately. It's attached the wire to the roof. What I've done with this is I've gone horizontally across the roof in 90 centimeter stages, which uh, made the task fairly long, but I was able to tort the wire um, just a little bit to make sure that it wasn't too floppy. But being a quail pen, I wanted the roof to have a little bit of give in it because if you scare these guys they fly upwards like a rocket and if they bash their heads on the wire and it's too hard they can break their necks so if it's a little bit if it's got a little bit of give in it well then the quail have a better chance of surviving step nine is the door now believe it or not this whole door came in this little cardboard box I don't know how they do it. I think the engineers that have put this together are geniuses. But the door frame only cost me, I think it was $47. It comes into a kit where it has hollowed out uh, steel piping. And 
all you simply do is expand it to the door frame. Now it says in the instructions here to assemble it on the ground to the specifications or the measurements of your door frame. Well here's a simple tip from a non-builder. This is what I did to save time and to save me measuring anything. I put the hinges in first, the top and the bottom, and I made sure that the hinge was square off with the door frame, because the, the hinge only, only goes to here and to here. And once I had the hinges in, then I just put the rest of the steel onto the hinges and expanded it out until I got to the side of my door frame, the, the bottom and the top. Simple as that. It was the easiest door I've ever put on anything. Actually, it's probably only the second door I've ever done. But uh, it's, it's easy to do, and I would recommend buying the, buying the kit straight off rather than trying to make your own door to fit. The final and easiest step of all is step 10. And that means you've got your pen or your quail run built, and it's just a matter of adding the little fellas in there. And that's it. Pretty simple. Steps from 1 to 10. Thanks for watching Self Sufficient Me. I'm Mark Valencia. Go to the website if you need more information. I've also got the equipment I used to build this. I've got the materials used in it. I've also got a price breakdown. So you can build something you can print it off and build something exactly the same as this at your place. It's easy to do, it just takes a little bit of time and effort and you'll have the best quail or chicken run in your street. Thanks for watching, bye for now.